This video is sponsored by SafeDNS. SafeDNS is a cloud-based web filtering technology to safeguard your family or organization against cyber threats and objectionable content on the internet. Use the link in the description below to sign up for SafeDNS free trial. More about my thoughts with SafeDNS in a few moments. Rounded corners, center taskbar menu icons, and a whole bunch of hardware version upgrades that you must make. That's Windows 11 for you, and I am not switching to Windows 11. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why I am not upgrading to Windows 11. Now, before I get started in today's video, I don't think you're inferior for upgrading to Windows 11 if you do. In fact, I use Windows 10 right now. In this whole kind of debate between Mac, Linux, and Windows, you know, what's the what's the best for cybersecurity? You're gonna have to use all of them, and it's just a waste of time, in my opinion. All right, so answering the question head on, it's because it's not meeting my particular needs when it comes to the next phase that I'm about to enter in. Well, let me go ahead and expand on what I'm talking about with my next phase. So for the last three and a half years, I have been using the Windows 10 ecosystem. I did a video a few years back detailing why I used Windows as a cybersecurity student, and it virtually summed up to that all of my university studies and software programs required throughout my coursework were required with Windows and the Microsoft ecosystem, which includes the Office Suite and their applications. I'm also not a gamer, and I'm also not a Linux power user, so at the time I stayed with the mainstream when I was entering into my freshman year of university. Well, times have changed, sort of. Yeah, well, they're going to anyway. My next phase of use will be a three-tier system of using different computers with operating systems. I'll have my work computer, which will be issued by the business that I work for. I'll have my personal daily use computer that I'm getting ready to build within the next six months. And then I'll have my second use daily computer, which will have Windows 10 on it for the time being. So this setup, it's a little bit more complicated than it could be. I could just use virtual machines or I guess rent things on the cloud, but I want to separate my work environment from my personal environment, first off. Second off, I really want to power and harness the technical power and really the power of Linux when it comes to building technical projects. And that's why I'm going to be installing Linux. And a lot of mainstream desktop or at home use Linux distributions are gaining wider support even within the last, I would say, decade to five years. Now, the only reason I'm not completely ditching the Microsoft ecosystem and Windows altogether is because of what I do here on YouTube and with my platform, Cyber Academy. I address security topics on this channel, I thought I would dedicate one little section to the security upgrades between Windows 10 and Windows 11 and really comparing the two. So is Windows 11 more secure than Windows 10? Yes, but I view these more as a change in profit drivers to sell hardware instead of true security requirements. Let me go ahead and expand what I mean here. The most notable differences of Windows 11 architecture include the hardware requirements for upgrade, and this is primarily TPM or the Trusted Platform Module. Windows 11 will require a TPM 2.0 chip for its booting process. Think of TPM chips as cryptographic stores which help you, you know, store encryption keys, passwords, and certificates. Right now, a lot of current versions include TPM 1.2. Now, the primary reason why Microsoft is requiring TPM 2.0 is because it offers better cryptographic algorithms. Another notable security feature is virtualization-based security, or VBS. And yes, I'm reading this. VBS aims to protect security solutions against exploits, using a segmented, isolated part of the memory. This will give way to Hypervisor Protected Integrity Code, HVCI, which will ensure that the Windows kernel isn't compromised. All right, so I'm not saying that any of these hardware security requirements are bad, right? You have to force change eventually in order to progress the evolution of security practices. Now, with that being said, I see Microsoft and this implementation as more of a way to sell new hardware such as laptops and tablets rather than a true security upgrade. I'm not saying that it's necessarily bad, I do think it has its place, but look, if you can sell Windows 11 devices because there's new hardware, 
that's where your money is going to be made. It's not going to be made from a whole bunch of free Windows 11 upgrades. I do understand at one point you do have to deprecate old technology and that includes security. However, I would rather use a solution or an operating system which embraces change while not forcing its users to switch by 2025 in this case to an operating system, which means you have to buy basically new hardware. And that's another reason why I'm ditching the Windows ecosystem is I believe it's becoming more of a profit-driven uh, operating system. Yep, use Linux. Overall, should you shy away from Windows 11? No, I still think it has its use within the industry, of course. For any given user uploading photos or web browsing, sure, Windows 11 is a good operating system for them. So you have a couple of options. You can stay within the Windows 10 ecosystem. You could go into maybe a Mac OS X and buy, in my opinion, very overpriced hardware, or you can look into a Linux distribution. Now I know Linux, all right? I know I'm being one of those people with the bandwagon, but really, I think for me personally, I want to hop onto a stable desktop, user-friendly, uh, Linux distribution, which offers usability while harnessing the power of Linux. There are many different Linux distributions out there, in particular for my hardware PC build that I'll be doing, let's say hopefully this winter, uh, I will probably be downloading Ubuntu for the time being. It's the one I'm most familiar with. But there are many different other Linux distributions out there, and there's not just Ubuntu. If you are somebody who's maybe looking into using Linux on a daily basis, besides just using a VM, you can actually use a VM and try just playing around and seeing what that's like for perhaps a week. Go download the ISO, try it on a VM, and see what you decide is the best in your particular situation. And that for me is probably gonna be Ubuntu. All right, so if you're like me and you want to filter out cyber threats and objectionable internet content, such as phishing websites, well, there's an easy way to do this, and that is through today's sponsor, SafeDNS. So through SafeDNS, you have a manual way to accomplish web filtering, and that is through their dashboard. You are able to create and manage filtering policies and settings for individual staff members, children if you're in a family, or really anyone in between that. You can view network usage statistics as well as view attempted websites they're trying to visit throughout the day. How does this service work in a basic way? Well, as the name suggests, Safe DNS uses DNS-based filtering to block unwanted websites. So even before the users reach them, they'll already be blocked, which will preserve your bandwidth before loading that content. Safe DNS also uses a lightweight agent-based software. The Safe DNS UI is used for blocking content, enabling safe search settings, and monitoring network usage. You know, Safe DNS is really a great service to add in to your cybersecurity strategy, whether you're at home or you're in an enterprise network. Like I said before, one of the big things you can prevent is from users going on to phishing websites, entering in their credentials, or doing something that your children or enterprise doesn't want you to do. There is a free trial when you sign up, so it's completely free for you to see what it's like to work with a provider like SafetyNS. So thank you very much for SafetyNS for sponsoring today's video. So that will end it for today's video, the Windows 10 versus Windows 11 debate and why I'm not even upgrading to Windows 11. Sort of, I guess. So for the time being, that is my thoughts on Windows 11, subject to change, of course. Hope everything is going well. Until the next video, well, have a good day, of course.